Say hello to the Oppo Find X8, the latest flagship that Oppo has thrown into the ring. I've had it in my hands for around two weeks now, and I've gotta say, Oppo has definitely stepped things up with some sleek new features. So I figured why not walk you through what's new with this phone and for a bit of extra fun, let's size it up against the Galaxy S24 Ultra, one of the most powerful Androids out right now. Oh, and just so you know, this video is sponsored by Oppo, but don't worry, I'm still keeping it real with my thoughts. So let's get into it, starting with the design. The Oppo Find X8 has leveled up with a cleaner, more minimalistic design, and I'm all in. It comes in three colors, star gray, space black, and shell pink. I've got the star gray edition, which is a tad lighter than the Galaxy S24 Ultra's titanium gray model. Oppo's even gone for flat sides now with slightly contoured edges and rounded corners, making it feel like some of the latest iPhones or Google Pixel devices. The result, a phone that's not just sleek, but actually more comfortable to hold. Now, the Galaxy S24 Ultra is still rocking that boxy look with slightly rounded sides and sharper corners. It's unique and feels premium, sure, but when it comes to comfort, the Oppo takes the edge. Plus, Oppo's still using their signature Cosmos ring for the cameras, but they slimmed down the bump by 40% without sacrificing the camera quality. And honestly, the ring looks way cleaner than some scattered lenses on the Samsung. Oh, and the Find X8 is lighter, thinner, and smaller than both its predecessor and the Galaxy. Plus, it still comes with that handy alert slider, which makes it super easy to switch between sound modes. However, Samsung does have the addition of the S Pen, a great tool for note taking, drawing, and fine navigation. It's a unique feature that might just make the Galaxy S24 Ultra the go-to for some. So in terms of design, I think the Oppo Find X8 is the better option here, but the Galaxy S24 Ultra is still not something you should brush off quickly. When talking about durability though, Samsung pulls ahead. The Galaxy S24 Ultra has a titanium frame, super tough compared to Oppo's aluminum alloy. Samsung's front glass is also stronger, giving it the edge in scratch resistance and impact resistance as well. That said, Oppo isn't lagging too far behind. They've introduced what they call armor shield construction, which reinforces the glass and absorbs impacts better than before. Plus, even though both phones come with an IP68 water resistance rating, Oppo takes it up a notch with an IP69 rating. That means it can handle high temperature water jets up to 80 degrees Celsius. So in terms of water resistance, Oppo's a bit more future-proof. All right, time for the displays. Samsung's flagships always lead in this department, but Oppo is catching up. The Find X8 sports an AMOLED panel with LTPO support if you go for the Pro model. It also boasts a 120Hz refresh rate and a 6.8 inch screen on the X8 Pro model, like the Galaxy as well. But here's where Oppo shines. It reaches a peak brightness of 4,500 nits compared to Samsung's 2,600 nits. So outdoors, Oppo's screen visibility is pretty much way better. The Find X8 also has ultra-thin bezels and a 3840Hz PWM dimming rate, which basically reduces flicker even better at low brightness levels, great for nighttime use. Samsung still has a higher resolution and stronger front glass, plus an ultrasonic fingerprint sensor that works with the screen off, while Oppo's optical sensor sits at the bottom of the screen and is kind of annoying to reach. So each has its perks, but Oppo's display really impressed me with its brightness and low light flicker control. Now let's talk about the cameras because it's pretty clear that Oppo poured a lot into this area. The Find X8 is still rocking a Hasselblad master camera system with three 50 megapixel lenses, a wide, a periscope telephoto with 3x optical zoom, and a 120 degree ultra wide lens. The Pro model even ups the zoom to 6x optical and it throws in an iPhone style shutter button, which is a nice touch. For those who want the gritty details, here's how they stack up against the Galaxy S24 Ultra side by side. Now when it comes to actually snapping photos, both phones are lightning fast. But here's the kicker, the Find X8 has just a touch less shutter lag. It's super minor, but noticeable if you're paying attention, especially when you compare it to the Galaxy S24 Ultra's already impressive speed. It's not a huge difference, but it's there. Oh, and if you're into burst shots, Oppo has something called lightning snap now, which lets you hold down the shutter button to capture up to seven frames per second. 
It's perfect for catching fast moving stuff like kids, action shots, or pets, which we all know can be challenging. The Galaxy S24 also has a similar feature where you can pull down on the shutter button to enable burst mode, and it's faster at snapping photos too. But here's the thing, speed doesn't always mean better quality. On the Oppo, the results are a lot cleaner with less blur and grain and better coloring. So if you're after quality action shots, the Find X8 does a slightly better job in that department. In daylight shots, both phones did really well. You get vibrant colors and lots of detail. However, I did notice that the Galaxy overexposed a bit more in some shots. The Find X8 did a much better job of providing better contrast, shadowing, and just overall saturation. At night, both phones usually provided solid results too. Great detail, good shadowing, and smoothening. However, once again, I did find the Oppo to do a slightly better job with the coloring. It captured the darkness of the sky a lot better, and it didn't really blow out the highlights and smaller key lights like lampposts like the Galaxy did. However, the Oppo does need to line up on the shadowing because in some smaller things, they get darkened too much and you can barely see them. They're just pitch black like the trees. On top of that, when zooming in and switching to the 3X telephoto lens at night, Oppo's larger sensor in the 3X periscope camera also provided better results since it could let in more light than Samsung's telephoto. For portrait mode, I honestly found Hasselblad to provide the best option as well, giving off a better looking bokeh effect, coloring, better exposure, and defining the edges a lot better. Still, the Galaxies wasn't all that bad either. As for video recording, each provided great results and it had fantastic stabilization and sound. However, what I like about the Find X8 is that unlike the Galaxy S24, it supports Dolby Vision HDR at up to 4K 60fps across all cameras, including the selfie, which is amazing. So the videos come out looking a lot more vibrant and detailed. The Galaxy S24 Ultra does have HDR10+, which gives nice color and brightness, but it's not as dynamic as Dolby Vision. That said, the Galaxy still has the upper hand when it comes to video resolution since it can shoot at up to 8K resolution, something that the Oppo can't do yet. Oppo also threw in some new features with the Find X8 to elevate your photography game. One of the coolest ones is called AI Telephoto Zoom. What happens here is that when you zoom in past 10X, the phone starts using AI to analyze the image at a pixel level to enhance it digitally. It's subtle, up to 30X, but at 60x or more, the difference is huge. Plus, it can even go up to 120x zoom, which is insane. Honestly, some zoomed in shots on the Find X8 look better than the ones that you get on the Galaxy S24 Ultra. So if you're a zoom photography fan, both phones will do you well, but I do think that Oppo has an edge here. Another neat feature is live photo. It's like Apple's live photos, but Oppo claims it's the first Android phone to offer this without sacrificing quality. When you take a shot, you can long press the image in your gallery to see a mini video of that moment. Samsung has something similar, and it records a bit longer. So if you love capturing those in-between moments, both phones have this fun feature. And for concert goers, Oppo added a stage mode, and it's designed to improve shots taking in low light, high energy environments like concerts. It helps to preserve the lighting and vibe of the performance so your shots look more realistic. I tested it at my church and it seemed to work pretty well. Now regarding performance, both phones are incredible and there's no clear winner here. Each has its strong suits. The Oppo Find X8 is rocking the MediaTek Dimensity 9400 chip and it can even be upgraded to a whopping 16 gigabytes. On the other hand, the Galaxy S24 Ultra has the Snapdragon Gen 3, and it also has 12 gigabytes of RAM. In day-to-day -day use, both phones feel super fast, no complaints there. However, where Oppo really shines is in CPU-heavy related tasks, like video editing or multitasking, while the Galaxy S24 Ultra really shines when it comes to AI and gaming performance. So yeah, both have their moments. It's not about one being better overall, it's more about what you need from your phone. Plus, even with these phones having very powerful chipsets, they each had no problem remaining cool to the touch, even under demanding workloads. And it's all thanks to their great vapor chambers that dissipate heat very quickly. In terms of battery life, the Oppo Find X8 definitely pulls ahead. Not only does it last longer than the Galaxy S24 Ultra, but it also charges way faster. 
I'll get into that in a second. Now the Find X8 has a bigger battery, but the real game changer is that it uses a silicon carbon battery instead of the usual lithium ion. It's a new type of tech that uses a silicon carbon composite for the anode instead of graphite. What that means is that you can pack more energy into the same size battery, giving you longer battery life without increasing the size of the phone. And honestly, it works really well on the Find X8. On top of that, it supports 80 watt Super VOOC wired charging, so you can go from zero to 100% in just 48 minutes. That's pretty insane. Plus, to make it even crazier, the Find X8 supports 50 watt Air VOOC wireless charging. Yeah, you heard that right. Uh, so you can charge this phone wirelessly at 50 watts. And it even has MagSafe support. The only downside though, is that to get the full 50 watt wireless speed, you'll probably need to get Oppo's proprietary magnetic turbine charger since there aren't a ton of 50 watt wireless chargers out there just yet. So just something to keep in mind. And one last thing is that it supports 10 watt reverse wireless charging, which is also pretty cool. Now the Galaxy S24 Ultra on the other hand, supports 45 watt wire charging, which isn't bad at all. Definitely better than what even Apple offers. It also supports wireless charging at 15 watts and it also supports reverse wireless charging. When it comes to software, both phones are going to provide you with a spectacular experience. They're each running their own Android skin, One UI on the Samsung, and ColorOS on the Oppo. And Samsung does promise a longer update commitment of seven years, while Oppo still only promises four years of major OS updates. Huge bummer. Still, the Find X8 arrives with the newer Android 15 version out of the box, while the Galaxy is still on Android 14. So that's something to consider. Still, as you all know, One UI is the king of features, and you'll be able to do a lot more on the Samsung than you can on the Oppo. But don't get it twisted though, because ColorOS 15 is still extremely feature-packed, and now even has a fresh new set of AI features that are really handy. One of my favorite new features is one that makes it really easy to share files with any iPhone. It's found within the settings under the name Share with iPhone, and once you turn it on, you can easily send any file directly from the sharing menu to any iPhone. iPhone users will just need to download an extra app called O Plus Connect to receive the files, but that's it. Not to mention that, in my honest opinion, the OS looks a lot cleaner than One UI and feels a lot smoother with more animations. If you'd like a detailed rundown of each OS, I've done reviews for both, which I'll leave in the YouTube cards. I even recently reviewed Oxygen OS 15, which has all of the same new features that Color OS 15 has. So be sure to watch that as well so that you can learn about everything that's new in this software. Trust me, there's a lot of awesome new goodies. In the end, the Oppo Find X8 is a pretty solid phone with a lot of great improvements. It looks amazing, it's super fast, has fantastic battery life, great charging speeds, and a good camera setup. Honestly, there's not a whole lot that I change here. If I had to nitpick though, I'd like the fingerprint sensor to be a little bit higher so it's easier to reach. I'd love a longer update commitment, and yeah, maybe a little less bloatware out of the box, but you can always remove that stuff as well. When you compare it to the Galaxy S24 Ultra, I think the Find X8 gives you a lot more for your money. It's hundreds of dollars cheaper and feels really similar to the S24 Ultra in terms of performance, camera, and visual appeal. It even has a better battery life and a way faster charging speed but of course you'll be missing out on the S Pen. So those are my thoughts on the Oppo Find X8. And again, despite this video being a sponsorship, these are my genuine thoughts. Anyway, be sure to check out this video where I compare the Oppo Reno 12 Pro against the Galaxy S24 Ultra. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Let me know what phone you think is the best option in the comments and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!